here live on Facebook and, and my YouTube channel of Comfort Havoc number two. Facebook will probably interrupt. So if that does, you can find it on Comfort Havoc number two. Because it stopped the last time with the leggings, the Me Too movement, and all that other stuff that I was talking about. So I tell y'all about bravery and courage. Bravery and courage, first, let me put that out there. It has no gender bias. There are a lot of brave women, there are a lot of brave men. Some serve our country. And in light of all the things that's been going on with the head ass hat in charge, you know, we have to understand that sometimes the smallest bit of bravery or well, the smallest bit of courage can have the biggest impact or the biggest explosion of things, you know. So, one, the coward that mowed over people in Toronto, hopefully he's going to get what he's got coming to him. Because there ain't nothing brave about running over women and children in a van because of some shit you've seen or some asshole inspired you to do something stupid. As we as Charlottesville know, lots of people who were at the rally was inspired by some asshole to come and do something stupid. Now, I want to talk to y'all about bravery and courage for one reason and one reason only. As a veteran, I didn't get to serve the way I wanted to serve. Y'all who know me, know what happened. That's water under the bridge. I'm having some issues with the military as we speak. But to the brave women and men in law enforcement and the fire department, and the police department, and everything else. But more importantly, the people who serve. Because there are no braver people than the people who signed that death warrant to go and serve this country for a bunch of people who really can care two shits about us when we get out. So, I'm being a little bit courageous now. Because I don't have nothing really bad to say about the military, except for why can't you treat us as good as you do while we're in when we get out. That's pretty much where my bravery ends, because it's really the only question I have for that. But, you know, I, I had a hip replacement, my life went to hell in a handbasket, and I'm afraid to train because I was told not to. So for three years, my courage has been on the floor. And me losing my ability to do martial arts has taken more from me than most people will ever know. I have lost my confidence. I'll be the first to admit I've never been unconfident as long as I had martial arts. And now that I so don't get to use it, my confidence is like less than zero. You know, I got issues that I have to deal with and I've dealt with them as best I can. But sometimes you don't always get to deal with your issues. I lost my father three years ago. The bravest thing that I've ever had to do was try to remember that he's never going to call me back and that his birthday is in three days. Yeah, it was his birthday's on the last day of the month. So I'm going to make a video about that. It won't be live, but for my two brothers and myself, I know I miss my father. Hopefully they see this and it reaches out to them. You know, we don't really get to talk like talking about it. They're busy. They have kids. I'm not that busy, but I'm back in school, so I don't have a lot of time to deal with a lot of family stuff. Bravery, by definition, is basically one who puts others before himself and is willing to sacrifice himself or herself no matter the cost to get the job done. Courage is basically the same thing. Courage is also one of your warrior ethos if you're in the army. I don't know about the Navy, the Marines, or the Air Force, but the warrior ethos, the card that never leaves my pocket, it's in this wallet. I'm not going to read it because you never know who's watching. Terrorists could be watching. They can infiltrate us, and then we're all fucked. And the first thing they'll say is, well, James gave them the warrior ethos on his page. Then I'll have all kinds of shit happening to me. Pass. We all find bravery and courage when it's needed the most or when we stumble into something that we don't have a lot of say in. I was brave enough to put a video up yesterday about how the Me Too movement has affected innocent men. I'm courageous enough to say, you know, I like women. I really like women. I am definitely afraid to approach them, to ask for dates, to tell them how good they look because of the Me Too movement. And in light of everything that's been going on, I want to be brave enough to put my feelings out here to where, you know, I never ever thought that 
law enforcement people would ever do really bad stuff until they caught the Golden State Killer, Strangler, Rapist, whatever the hell he is, who happened to be an ex-member of law enforcement. Which is why I always say every city and every state needs to have internal affairs and every cop needs to wear a body cam uh, other than the undercover ones, you know, because TV police and real police ain't a damn thing the same about them. And we have to know that because in the real world, how many more Trayvon Martins will we have? How many more colleges and high schools will get shot up because some asshole who was not brave decided to be cowardly and shoot up his friends or people who have never done anything to them? We as people in America need to understand two things. One, we're all in this together. Two, you can't change the race of the man standing next to you. And once we establish that, and learn how to sit down and talk about things to get shit established to where I have a friend who's white. I don't see him as white. I see him as a human being. I have a friend who's Asian. I don't see him as Asian. I see him as a human being. I have a friend who's black. I see him as a human being. When we can all see people as human beings, then we will all reach the pinnacle of bravery. The rest of this will be finished on Comfort Havoc number two. We have a chance in this world to make things right amongst human beings. We have a chance to straighten things out, to take care of ourselves and each other. We choose not to do that because it's too much like the right damn thing to do. If this is working. We choose to do the right thing only when it's your last option. I can only speak for myself when I say that's never been my cup of tea. My dad has always told me, do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Not when it's your only option. Not because it's the easiest thing to do, but when it's the right thing to do, you do the right thing. Don't sugarcoat it. And I tell people like I tell you all the time here, I give you 99.9. .9. Only a few people in the world can literally sit down and take the whole 1000% of the truth. That being said, I want to end this video with, find your bravery, find your courage, and maybe, just maybe, we can make a difference in this world. I'm James Williams Jr. Just come back with number two. Be seeing you.